Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12, talking about wisdom. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and that's right judgment. What? Lacking today. And find out knowledge of witty. Witty is to wit, intelligence, inventions. You know, there are all kinds of inventions out there. There are some intelligent inventions that's found in the Bible, and there are some evil inventions that are found in the Bible. And all the evil ones, which kill and maim and destroy man, there are some things the Bible acknowledges that are good. The fear of the Lord. Now, when we go back to Proverbs chapter 1, when we learn, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So fear of the Lord now, it, it not only goes with knowledge, what you know, it shows up with wisdom. How to apply what you know. The fear of the Lord is to hate. Now we run back over to chapter 6 when we read verse 16. These, thing, these six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven is an abomination. There are things that God hates. And there are things that Christians are to hate. You can't remove hate from the Bible. It's there. So what? What are we to hate? Evil. Anything where you got to rightly divide the word and study the word, everything that is evil, you are to hate. Now we're talking about things. Well, my brother's doing evil things. You hate the things your brother's doing, but you pray for your brother to get out of that evil. Things that are found that are evil in the Bible are adultery, are intox intoxication, stealing, false witness. Did you read tonight? Well, I know people out there with videos on that, but as our family reading, they said that they sought false witnesses. You know who that was? That was the chief priests. They were the ones that know the law. Don't they know that one of the commandments is, Thou shalt not bear false witness? And the fact is, did you also read in Matthew that it says that many false witnesses came to lie about Jesus? Not a few, uh, many of them came. They put a, some kind of bulletin out there. Come and, and lie about this man. And then they had, li they had liars lined up. Murder. They sought to kill. Uh, excuse me. These were the religious leaders of the law to teach the people. And when you read over there in John, uh, what is it, chapter 3 or 6, they, well, these people don't know nothing. That's your fault. <laughs> because you haven't been teaching. You've been teaching, you know, wash the outside, the platter, the inside, the platter. And what are you doing eating a meal with unclean hands? Sin is evil. You're to hate it. But you're a prey for the people. See, judge not least you be judged. Paul says we are to judge things. I hate that lies are built into humans. A baby who cannot even speak will lie to you. He'll start crying. You pick him up. You check the diaper. It is dry. It is clean. You, you try to give him a, a bottle, or, or and he doesn't want it. He just, uh, hey, you know what? If I cry... Mama or daddy, that, that person there will come and pick me up. That's a lie. When people, you know, you deal with people. Oh, you hand them a gospel. I've got one already. Where? You know, I have been accused, and my wife can respond to this, I hope, rightfully. I have been accused of hating Catholics. And I don't. I hate the system. 
that puts a Catholic under bondage. See, I don't hate the people. I judge the thing that Paul says for me to judge. I hate what smoking does to people. And then it has that, that crutch for them. And there are people I'm praying to quit. It's evil. You are to hate evil. Satan is evil. You are to hate him because he's never going to get right. You can't pray for him. So coming, what, 21 more days, we'll have his anniversary, his birthday coming up. And how many Christians will not hate evil and go participate in their church? What was it? What was that one church they called it? They didn't call it Halloween party. What was it? The Autumn Festival. It was not. It was not trick or treat. It was trick or trunk. Trick or trunk. Well, what about the word trick? It doesn't. It, that doesn't. That's not a Christian word. That's not a Christian event. When I was married, I was married on November second. And on that night that we were married, the church was having a costume party. But it wasn't December 31st. My honeymoon, the church where I was attending at that time, was having a costume party. I've been in churches where they have costume parties. And dress up as the church that is to be hated. You mock. Hey, that's just the first word. Pride. By my notes here. Study. Pride, I have Isaiah 14, 12. You're to hate pride. And listen, that's America. She's proud about everything. You know, you think that Sodom and Gomorrah's main theme was homosexuality. It wasn't. You check the Bible, it was pride, arrogancy, much food, much money, much leisure. That's America. He, I, I can just imagine the great white throne judgment having... The, the residents of Sam Sodom and Gomorrah come up to Americans and smack them in the face. You guys had a Bible. We didn't have a Bible. Look what God did to us. Didn't Jesus say that about certain cities? Didn't he say, listen, if the events that happened in your, in your life happened in Tyre, the city will got right. Nineveh, an angry preacher went into Nineveh, not about sin, but he didn't want to be there, preached the shortest message in the world, and the entire city got right. You know why? Because they feared God and they hated evil. They just had to be been shown. That's why we're in the streets. That's why we knock on doors. Some people don't know what the consequences of sins are. Don't go on the street for, oh, Solomon's are going to burn in hell. That's not the message we talked the other night. Okay, if you're a Sodomite, you are a sinner, and your sins will stand before God. The fact is that Christ already died for that sin. You need a remedy. You need a prescription. Pride is a sin as much as evil. Look how many saints we got now. Look how many people that got saved last week. Look how many people are in our church. We've been the, the longest standing church in this community. That's pride. That's pride. And arrogancy. Oh, them people. And not only evil, the evil way. The way of death. The Broadway. 
that leads to destruction, and many go therein. You are to hate the, the, the things that Satan puts out there for people to turn away from the gospel. There's a woman that I, I can't say I hate, but the fact is I was dealing with a woman one time and she just pulled this person away from <coughs> salvation because she you know, wanted a simpler way. You know, when the sower went out to, to, to sow the seed, there are four events. One of them is completely taken right away by Satan himself. One, you know, oh, yeah, I, I, I trusted Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, I'm going to give that up because I don't want people at work to know. Or the other one, yeah, money. I want to gamble. I want to get the corporate ladder. Why give up my Sunday when I can be out fishing or, or get up in the corporate ladder, go work that day to get up there and do be number one? I ain't going to go. And then there's the, the 30 to 1600. Fold, I believe it, the numbers are. And the forward, again, we talk about it, it is crooked, it is unyielding to God. Mouth. When somebody you're dealing with, well, my church says, well, I don't believe. The Bible is written by me. That's an unyielding mouth. Somebody taught that guy. Somebody is leading that guy astray. Now you pray for the guy, but who taught him? You know, you're to hate every professor in the colleges today. You say even the Christian ones? Look at what they're producing. Do you know that in America today, and I'm going to put it on the line, I'll put that guy in the hot seat, that there, there's a school board in America in the 50 states that you call children penguins? Purple penguins. Because we don't want to call them males or females, so we'll call them penguins. That guy came out of a college somewhere. And he's being paid with tax dollars. That's a forward mouth. There's a male and there's a female. What am I going to do? I'm going to go to the bathroom. I got I got to look at a penguin picture and realize which one it is. If a penguin's going to wear a triangle or a penguin going to wear a, a rectangle, what? I'm sorry, but I'm a male. If I go in a, in a male's bathroom, I don't want a female to walk in and see what I'm doing. quite embarrassing and what's it say again do I hate the fear of the Lord is to hate evil pride arrogancy the evil way to forward mouth do I hate God hates it you're to hate it now imagine as a born-again Bible believing Christian stand at the judgment seat of Christ and you don't hate what God hates and you're being judged. Imagine God saying, I hate it, and you, I like it. I like it. Well, who asked for your personal opinion? Excuse me. You're the one that's got to put deodorant underneath on your armpits. God don't need deodorant. And you're going to tell God what is likable and what is not likable when he's giving to you in black and white and red and white if you got the words in Christ in red? And you're going to tell God what is what is approved and all that? I have, excuse me, judge not least you be judged. I have the right to judge because I got the Bible. I believe the Bible and the Bible saved me. What do you got? Someone on television who, who proclaims to be somebody who they're not? There are things you are to hate. Counsel is mine. Get an advice. And sound wisdom. Well, I wisdom dwell. There's a sound wisdom. 
James 3.13. I am understanding. Job 12, 9 to 25, and Job 32, 8. I have strength. 1 Kings 12, 1 to 19. If you have godly, godly wisdom, and you're a judge, and you got two women battling out in front of your throne, it's my child. No, it's my child. No, it's my child. No, it's my child. No, you, that was, the dead one's yours and the, de and the live one's mine. No, the dead one's yours and the live one's mine. No, it's my child. No, it's your child. And the king's looking back there like, Lord, remember I asked you in prayer? Will you Bring me a sword. That's wisdom. There are some judges out there who have wisdom, I don't know if godly wisdom, but they can tell who's right or wrong. You should let them run their mouth long enough. And this wisdom, this understanding, this strength, by me, wisdom, kings reign. Would you think a king that murdered his wife so he can have another wife? I don't think that's godly wisdom. Or a queen that would step down and say, listen, if Jesus Christ came today, I would step down off my throne, give it to him to sit down, give him my crown, and put it upon his head and kneel down, and then hail him as my savior. I, I believe that would be of God. You can't apply that verse to any president because no president is a king. There were three presidents in the Bible and only one was godly. The other two went out and sacked the good one. We're going to break away from kings because we're a Christian nation. And God, there's, there's a book named kings. There's no book named president. You know, since we've had a president in the White House, and even before the White House, since G George Washington, we have not had a revival in America. Check it out. The Great Awakenings are before the U.S. president. And don't give me that. I think it's the fourth Great Awakening. No, no, no. I've, I've seen the preacher's names and stuff like that. That is no Great Awakening. That says, alarm clock, go back to sleep and snooze a little more. True Bible repentance where bar rooms were shut down and everything like that had not happened with the presidents. We have not had a president show godly wisdom. Well, we had one Baptist here. How come he didn't try to put Jesus Christ and God into the Constitution? Only one president... Has there ever been the abstains of booze? We had a president who just sit down in the White House lawn with, with two guys and had, had, a, had beer. Oh, I bet you the champagne runs every January when they put a new president in office. That's not wise. They don't turn to God when it comes to let's go to war. They turn to the Senate or Congress. You think a president that gets down to his knees, whatever the bedroom's called, that he sleeps in and says, Lord God, today let me do something for you? And princes declare, decree justice. Chapter 31, verses 4 through 6. Do you think that the, the the princess will probably be the House and, and all that and the Senate declared justice when they're getting bribes under the table and pass unfit laws so you have to buy something that you don't want to buy, like car seats and insurance? And why is it when you have to get insurance and all of a sudden all the rates go up, now that you have to have it? We're having a war on drugs. Boy, we are losing. 
I smell marijuana when I'm downtown Daytona Beach. Oh, wait a minute. I thought we were having a war. There's no victory when I can sit there and come off an elevator and smell it. No, no victory when the cops are dealing it. That's not justice. It is not justice when you allow adultery couples go out there and fornicate themselves on television without turning it off, the FCC. So we're going to have television programs pretty soon. They're going to be butt naked. Oh, yeah, there's a controversy about that. It'll go through. But you get a man on a television, and I've known a preacher, and he preaches the truth of the Bible. No, we got to shut him off. We got to stop paying money to that radio station because we can't have that. How dare you speak about another man's religion? But you got women's breasts bouncing around on the television. That's okay. That's justice. Justice, you mean, oh, let's teach a th the theory of evolution in schools. Where is the theory of creation? Why can't we let the children decide by giving the proof of both and let the children decide? Yeah, I know why, because they'll turn to God. Justice would say, all right, let's give them both. Justice would be, all right, let's give Moses in the classroom and let's give Mr. Payne time in the classroom. That would be justice. By me, princes rule. And nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I said, there are judges out there who probably have God's wisdom. They're the fewest of the few. But when you get a judge in a courtroom, and somebody stretches out their hand, and if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. Uh, excuse me, sir, you want to close your fingers and try the glove now? Huh? Huh? That whole thing being on TV showed you the mockery of our justice system. You know why Lady Justice is blind today? Because she's ashamed. I blind my eyes too. Justice? You mean a person that gets arrested has a right to a lawyer if they can't afford one? What about the person that was violated? Go get your own. You have a right to a phone call. What about the person that was violated? Don't you have a cell phone? You got a quarter? For the first minute, whatever it is. Hey, the person that committed a crime, oh, he's in jail. Uh, he, 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 here's your hamburger. Listen, I know a jail that had, had hamburger and fries and a soft drink from a fast food restaurant. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They would probably have breakfast with a breakfast. I won't mention no BK name. Huh? What about the person that, that was violated? Well, where's their meal? And I can go in the prison system, but I won't go that far. I love them that love me. John 14, 21. Psalm 91, 14. 1 Samuel 2, 30. You know who God loves? God loves them that love his wisdom. God is love. God loves everybody. Not if you do the things he hates, he don't love you. Did you get that? God only loves you that if you love his wisdom. And when you break what God hates, and you, you repent and put it under the blood, 1 John 1, 9, then God loves you because you know that you're offensive, and you know what the offensive is, and you got it right. And those that seek me early shall find me. You know, I was saved in 1987, April. But I can remember all through my childhood growing up, I knew there was a God. I'd grown up in that Catholic religion. I didn't believe that. 
But I knew if I wanted God, I would have to go to that church, to the front of the altar when I prayed and stuff like that. I would pray to God at my bedside. I knew I didn't know who God was, but I knew who God was. And when God knew the sensible time that my time would be, he led me to the Lord Jesus Christ, and I bowed the knee, and I received him as my Savior. And look at the wisdom I got today. And I know the difference. I didn't know it was smart to start to you know ever quit smoking. I thought it was a smart thing to do. Even when I was punished by my parents when they found out I was doing it, I thought it was a great thing to go out and get drunk. Now I know it's wrong. I'm thank God that God gives me when I smell that stuff. That stuff smells like pee pee to me. Thank God. And those that seek, seek me early shall find me. I sought the Lord, and he revealed himself to me. Riches and honor are with me. You don't go after riches and honor instead of wisdom. Your wisdom with God will get you riches and honor, and that may not be here on planet Earth. It may not be. Go ask Paul. Paul had the ultimate prison ministry, but he had a lot of honor for different people. And a lot of people forsook him, but for Timothy, had respect. Mark had respect with Paul. Can you imagine the crowns and the, and the gems that Paul's going to get in the judgment seat of Christ? You know, people... Paul is still getting gems today, even though he's been dead I don't know how many years because of the writings. Do you know that you can trace your salvation back to one of the 11 apostles? And your salvation, ever what date that was, that was a crown in that apostle's crown. And then when you go to the apostle, the shepherd, when you go to the Lord Jesus Christ, think about all the crowns he's going to get for everybody that got saved. And when he comes back, it says he has crowns. He's got them all. And everybody saved will be credited to his crown. How about that? Well, but what riches and honor that we'll be, that we all have crowns and have done what he's told us, and we'll be coming back on horseback right behind him. Talk about honor. It says in Job, when somebody's going to shoot you or stick it out, you ain't going to dig. <laughs> I got no more pain. <laughs> and he take and stab them, and they got pain, huh? Should have believed in Jesus as your Savior, buddy. <laughs> Durable riches. Heavenly, eternal. That Jesus said that moth, moth and rust and thieves can't corrupt. How about that? And righteousness. It will be right for the Lord Jesus Christ to put a crown upon your head. It will, you know, with somebody who doesn't deserve one, well, what about me? I didn't get one. That's because I was there. I was grew up this neighborhood. Or, or I was growing up. No, no, because you didn't do nothing. Don't you falsely charge the judge of all the earth like they falsely charge him at his trial. If you get a crown and honor and reward from Jesus Christ, you deserved it. If you don't get one, you didn't deserve it. And there used to be a word called statesman in America that was held with great standard. It has been replaced by politicians. Politicians do anything with statement was a dignity. There was an office that was respected. My fruit. If wisdom is God, then the fruit has to be Ephesians chapter 5, the Holy Spirit. 
Because it doesn't say fruits, and it doesn't say fruits in Ephesians 5. It says fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. You go chase after gold in this world. And when I walk on the streets of New Jerusalem, I'm going to be walking on what you valued, what you went after. They, and you turn the radio on every time we, we change the cassette tape. We buy gold. What? That's the stuff I'm going to walk on. That's what the streets of New Jerusalem. And even that, it's pure gold. Pure gold is, I'm told, is clear. And my revenue, then choice silver. Wisdom will give you better than gold and will give you silver. You know what America will give you? Give you a piece of paper, a reserve. No, that's not even money. That's a promissory. If you were to take a dollar down to the bank and say, excuse me, uh, Mr. Teller or Mrs. Teller, can you give me exactly what this dollar is worth? He'll go give you a bunch of coins. You know, America, to make a penny takes four cents to make one penny. And you wonder why we're a trillion dollar in debt. You can't compare God's gold, God's silver, God's revenue, God's riches, God's honors to earthly, worldly stuff. You know what Jesus said about the coins and all that? Render the things to Caesar that belongs to Caesar. Render the things that belong to God. And you know what a lot of people do? They'll take their gift that God has given them, their talent that God has given them, and they'll give it to the world for gold and silver. I think they call it contemporary Christian music. You used to call it soul music. Used to be a lot of colored women you hear on the radio that came from a Baptist church. But if you would take your talents that God has given you and give to the government what's the government and give to God what God is giving you, and you get before Jesus, Jesus, okay, where's the talents? Here they are, Lord. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. How about that? And then you get that talent you don't give to God. That God gave you, well, I stuck it in where? Where did he bury it? He buried it in the earth. Dirt. You don't get no reward. You want to do right? Everybody wants to do right. I lead in the way of righteousness. Do you know a person that sells drugs on the street believes honestly in his heart he's doing right? Why would he be doing it? And with that, he gets the he gets the new car, he gets tax free revenue, he gets a lot of money, he gets a roll of bills. But that's not right. But to him, it's right. Heck, he's even he's even part of the, today. This day, day and he don't have to worry about most of the cops because they're involved in it too. In the midst of the past of justice, now some of you don't like what I'm saying, but it's it's true. When you got cops out there who are being arrested for DUI after they spent the whole day going after DUI people. There is no righteousness in the nation. I happened to study for the police force. And I was told by my commander in one of my classes in, in the classroom I was told to write this down in my notebook you cannot charge somebody with a crime that you are doing already if I'm stealing I can't arrest anybody for stealing 
That's what the Bible calls a hypocrite. And that will be done in our in our pulpits today. If you are involved in that sin, you better not be preaching about that sin. Imagine a healer getting up preaching about healing and he's got glasses on. Or had cavities fixed by a dentist. What about that? In the midst of the path of judgment, judge not least you be judged. You have to judge. If you don't, you're going to get run over by a car in the intersection. I was in the crosswalk. Not that guy's going 65 miles per hour. It don't matter. Oh, he hits me. I'll sue him. When you're dead? Or you're lying in a hospital for four years and the guy doesn't have insurance? And the rest of your life you're going to be in pain? Oh, what, what's money going to do for you then? Oh, I'm going to get pills. Not under Obamacare, you're not. And I know that personally. Or don't live in Florida, at least. If you need pain medicine. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures, crowns and rewards. Can't read my note here. There are no sales in New Jerusalem. There's no cash registers. There's no cheap goods. No markdowns, no clearances. When you inherit from the Lord Jesus Christ, you have earned by doing what he has told you to do. And it will be treasures upon your head. Souls that will be in heaven because of you. Why? Because you have God's wisdom on how to do it. When somebody comes up to you and says, Hey, just say this prayer. That's not God's wisdom. That is not the wisdom of God. Even just, you know, here's the Romans road. You've got to be careful. Romans road is good, but you got to make sure that guy understands what he's doing. Now, salvation is simple, yes. But you can't just have to say this prayer. There's some acknowledgments that they have to acknowledge. If you're going to deal with a Jehovah Witness, you better get that guy to learn and understand that Jesus is God. If he don't understand that, he's not going to get saved. When you got saved, well, I don't drink no more. Where did that come from? That came from the Holy Spirit and dwelling inside you saying, Hey, I'm getting kind of sick of this stuff down here. You need to get rid of that. You got a new occupancy down inside you. You don't have Satan in here no more. Now, you want to get rid of that stuff. You want to get rid of that smoking. You want to get rid of those stuff you're putting through your eyeballs. Get rid of that. And when you hate those things, and you say, yes, Lord, okay. And you may not even read the Bible. I'm talking about when a person first gets saved. And then you get into the Holy Spirit and say, you know what? You need to get a Bible. You need to start reading. I wasn't saved for, I, I'm going to say about 24 hours. I got saved about 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, somewhere around there. I went to church the next day and in the morning service. I stood up and announced to everyone what I had done. And I was going to get baptized. Church ended about noon. I went about 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I was already witnessing to my first person about Jesus Christ. Somewhere, I don't know how long after that. I'm trying to think. Well, it wasn't too long. I needed to get a Bible. And I was doing work at a, at a school for juvenile boys. 
And there was a library there. And I looked through, I was looking through because I was one, you know, needed something to do, passed on. And I saw a Bible there, and opened it up, Holy Bible, and okay, and nice little pictures in it. And now, I don't know if the Holy Spirit told me to steal it, but I needed to get a Bible and I stole it and read it. And got into it. And then it was time to the church. There was a visitation. Okay, let's go. Then there were gospel tracts, which I thought were Christian trading cards and all that. I was collecting them until someone took me aside and said, Brother, you need to give them out to lost people. And that's how you grow. And that's how wisdom has come into my life that today I am on a street corner preaching or trying to hand out gospel tracts or, or holding a sign that tells people not go to hell. I can sit down with somebody at, at a park bench and show them what the Bible says. I can do these lessons before you and teach you all kinds. Listen, you want to see doctrine, get into what we're doing in 2 John. We are in the 30th lesson of the 7th verse, I believe it is. And all the things that we have studied. That is the wisdom of God to help you and help me and help others in my family to do right. And too many will stop. They will come to an event in their life, whether it be a sin, whether it be family, friend, work, a hobby, money. I already said work. Something in their life, and they will tell the Holy Spirit, no, nah, I've had enough, that's it, I stopped. And then you stop for whatever wisdom of the world. And you don't go any further. There is the worldly wisdom and then there's the godly wisdom. And we're going to stop there because we're going to get into another wisdom. Next time, Lord willing. About the wisdom that we have is the same wisdom that God created everything. Now, what do I mean when God created everything that wisdom? This, before we get into study, you don't have to take this. This is a personal belief I believe in. So I'm going to throw it out there. This is my own belief. I believe God knew there was going to be evolutionists out there. Later on. Romans chapter 1. So in God's wisdom, I believe he said, okay, next animal. Adam, here he is. Platypus. God? Yeah. Yes, Adam? What the heck is this animal? He's laying eggs. He's got a duck bill. He's got a fur. He's got nipples. What'd you do? I thought you don't make no mistakes, God. <laughs> you wait and see what, how they explain that one. Okay. I believe that's the wisdom of God. He knew there was going to be evolution. Okay, explain that. The next animal, Adam, you got to come over to the beach. On this one. Okay, go to the beach, Eve. Let's go. Oh, he wasn't around. All right, go to the beach. Here's the next animal. Oh. Whale. You like that name? Great fish, whale. Wait a minute. God, that's not a fish. It's a mammal. Yeah, you wait. You had to wait to see what they're going to do with that one. That one's going to wash up on the beach one day, and they're going to try to drag it out, and then, you know what, let it grow feet. It's going to try to be trying to grow legs and trying to walk out of water, but they're going to keep on dragging it out. And they're going to have such a fight with that one in the cemeteries that they're going to say that Jonah is a myth. When my son will tell them it's a whale. Can't be a whale. A whale's not a fish. Yeah, you ain't. Yeah, that's the wisdom of God. Can you imagine God standing before a cemetery student? You ready for this? Call up the words of the Bible. Open up the gospel. All right, let's everyone tell what this animal is. It's a whale. That's God's wisdom. To fight man's wisdom. And God wins. Checkmate, you're dead. 
Well, we've got studies that men have lived inside whales. What well, the Bible says that he died. Jonah died. Checkmate, you lose. God's wisdom is greater. And we'll get into the wisdom, the same thing we're studying now, the same wisdom that you have to get godly revenue, to get godly crowns and rewards, is the same wisdom that was in Genesis chapter 1 when the sun, the moon, and everything was created. It's there. You have inside you the same wisdom that God had. In fact, you've got the same wisdom that God has. You got the same wisdom that only not only that God has, the world doesn't. Matter of fact, you you got the same wisdom that God has that you have that Satan doesn't have. And Satan was there in the beginning with God. He was above God. And Satan believes, I guess, by what he teaches his people, that everybody came from a tadpole. You know what a tapo is? He's a reptile. You know what classification Satan is when he was a cherubim? He was a reptile. Check out Dagon. He was a reptile. But we'll get it all wisdom next time. But there's a godly wisdom, and the godly wisdom will tell you what to hate, and you're to hate what God hates, and you'll get rewards by God and riches that are much better than what are on this planet Earth. From the God that made them, by the way. You know God made the riches. 